Hello, we are Team uh, WTF. And um, actually, before we start, we'd like to um, just say that this demo was actually almost canceled. Um, not because our code is so buggy that it will probably crash in two minutes, but um, actually because our team was so fragmented by the end of this course. And you, know, you see all these great game demos, but you've got to realize that the goal of this course is not to create a game demo, but to work as a team and to learn about teamwork. And I think that's something that some of us lost sight of in this course. But um, you know, fortunately, at the end, we managed to pull together as a team. And that's really why we're here today. So um, I, thank you. I don't think I can stall this any longer. Um, so let's get this started. Yeah, um, we need, uh, we're going to take three volunteers actually. Who would like to play? Uh, come on down. I think we have these three. Okay. Uh, can we load up? And I would also like to thank our contributors. Um, we have original art and music. And um, the Colossus model, uh, the apocalypse machine was created, the, the uh, texturing was done by someone known as Soft Distortion from cgtalk.org. We also have um, a character model, Brad Thompson, created by Nelson Doe. And um, let's see, we have amazing concept art done by Stuart Guidry and Larry Kwok. And all of the music is done by Sean Beeson and Vincent Diamante. And we would like to present to you this game, The Delicate Petals of Pandora. This is all rendered in game. You'll see, you're seeing actually a lot of effects now. The Sakura pedals, those, that's a particle system. I think we also have various compositors on there, like a little slight HDR going on, some desaturation, um, uh, tone mapping. Yeah. And I would like to now take this chance to introduce the group, starting with um, Todd Espiritu Santo. Or, he, he created all, um, he was our art and 3D animation guy. And then uh, Lani Nguyen. She, she, she was in charge of movies and also art. Um, Charles Sanglim Swan, and he did our GUI and sound. And finally, Henrik Xu, he was our graphics engine guy. And my name is Patrick Shu. And let's get started. Our game is a stylish, cooperative gameplay where multiple players face off against an enormous piece up to 30 times the player size. This is our main character, Rebecca Bales. This is... The game takes place in the year 10,003. And this is actually a flashback showing the year 10,000. When one day, a Colossus appears on Earth. And it was called the Apocalypse Machine. And I think we like that explosion so much that we threw it in the intro in the game and also in the ending. And this is our movie mode. Um, we try to give this game as much of a cinematic feel as possible. So even in the game, you won't see a lot of gooey um, interfaces cluttering the screen. Notice the, there's wisps flying around. We put a lot of detail into the game. 
there's also foliage there, and I think in the game we have ten different types of plants and like eight different tree models. These are our characters, and we have four fully functional characters, each with up to a dozen uh, different animations. Um, you're just Brad Thompson, Rebecca Mills, Crystal, and Keys. I think Keys was actually modeled after a, a real student who goes here. He's have a strange sexual orientation. <laughs> Let's go. You notice it fades from black into the game, so we have lots of cinematic things like that. This is an in-game cutscene. Rebecca Mills is a very homely type of girl. of actions they have an auto lock on mode and we took this auto targeting system from our favorite uh, I think that was from the band actually players can also shoot they can shoot fast or they can charge up their weapons and shoot uh, like missiles like this very nice and you can notice that the bosses is blocking the missiles and they're being deflected so you can't just shoot them straight up Players can also grapple, and you can grapple onto three different types of items, the islands, also the birds, and you can grapple onto actual terrain when you see them. The Colossus has very cinematic type effects, and notice the Sakura petals just flying up when he does the shockwave, and we also have a lot of the flower petals just flowing around the scene to give it a more amazing feel. Did he just do what I think he did? <laughs> so you're also seeing um, HDR in the scene. The Colossus, he looks pretty good I think because we have three different shaders on him. We have book mapping, uh, specular mapping, and there's also a fairy shader we have. The fairy shader is a technique used to simulate uh, light scattering and it creates a velvet type look. It's also put on all the other characters so you can see a kind of glow on them. The scene was entire entirely scripted by the way. We were using something called Squirrel Scripting which was created by the guys over at Crytek uh, Game Development. So we're using industrial quality uh, tools. And we actually have like 3,500 lines of scripted code. The entire, all the cutscenes, all the uh, character dialogues, the character selection screen is all scripted and we can change anything on the fly. And this was necessary because the game takes like 20 minutes just to compile. We also have um, animation blending for the Colossus, which was necessary because he's so big. And there you can see our bear model overwatching the uh, scene. I guess in the year 10,003 it ended up there somehow. So after three hits, players will die. Um, you also see we created smoke plumes for the uh, Colossus when he lands and when he sh does his shockwave attack. The Apocalypse machine there has three different attacks. You can throw motors at players, you can do his shockwave, or when the player is really far away, it will jump at the player. You can see he's almost dead now. Players are cooperating, but uh, one person is distracting it and the other player is going from behind and attacking him so that he can't block and deflect the missiles. And I think um, 
And what we really wanted to do here was not just create a game, but uh, really to create a story. A story about humanity, about love. See, this is our underwater mode. Okay, he just died. And we've seamlessly integrated a CG movie here. The player is going around the monster in slow motion shooting a barrage of missiles. He just wanted to be loved. Signature hair flip. this point you just have to wonder you know like he just wanted to be loved why why did he have to face this this fate you know like sometimes you just love someone so much and and you, you know, maybe you dream about them but uh, this is what happens So after the, uh, after the apocalypse machine died, the rivers flowed blood as if crying for lost love. And our main character, Rebecca Mills, she's alone again. You know, she, she had a friend for a while, but now all she can do is let the windswept petals gently wipe away her tears. We can't dream forever. We, we just can't. And now she's alone now. And you realize, maybe, maybe the closet was right. You know? Maybe, uh, maybe all we really need is love. But when you really have nothing, when you lose to love, you just, you never want love again. And you start dreaming about the person and you just love them so much. You want them to come back. Just just come back. Come back. So in our epilogue scene, this is Rebecca's dream. Or her nightmare. Scene, we are also showing off our ability to swap scenes and have multiple AI. The AI are treated just like other characters. Every time we swap a scene, we have to free all the memory and recreate everything. The physics, the animation, the AI. And as all good movies end, our game also ends in the cemetery. Half the members are single. We hope we taught you a little something about love. And if you learn something, then this was really all worth it. Thank you.